We're back in the pro shop today. We're going to get some new stringing cables installed on the RX-7 Ultra. But I want to give you a few things to consider if you're going to be uh, changing your own set of stringing cables out, whether it's your first time or you've done it before. Just a couple checkpoints. Stay tuned. This show is brought to you by Maven Optics. Head over to mavenbuilt.com. Check out their full selection of gear and optics. And when you're getting ready to check out, make sure you enter the promo code ALPHAGIFT in full caps. Once again, that's ALPHAGIFT in full caps. And they're going to throw you in a, a free bonus gift with your next purchase of any set of optics. Now, back to the show. All right, so this video may be kind of uh, a little bit entry level for some of you, but for, for those of you who have not worked on your own equipment and are considering doing so, um, follow along. I'm going to give you a few things to consider, uh, some things to check as you're looking at uh, swapping out stringing cables or, or anything for that matter if you're looking at working on bows. Um, some of the main things that I'll just start with as a, as a new bow tech, bow technician, if you're looking at doing that for yourself or helping somebody else is easiest thing to do is grab your phone, take a quick video, you know, video, you know, both sides of the bow, um, see how the uh, stringing cables, what tracks they're in, where they, you know, where they cross, where they intersect, you know, where the cables are crossing off a roller guard or a cable slide. Take some pictures in addition to that if you want to. Those basic references that you can go back in case you get stuck. Let's say you're taking stringing cables off and maybe you just get a little bit excited and rip everything off and you didn't exactly pay attention to, for example, which cable goes in which track in a roller guard, right? Or, you know, as some of these, these cables loop over certain parts of the, of the cam, if you haven't worked on a whole bunch of bows, you may not be as familiar with it. So just take your time, take a video, take some pictures, and have that as a reference. Second thing I'll encourage you to do is um, if you have the ability to have, if you have a draw board or if you've got a pull-down scale to where you can double-check poundage. If you, if you have a pull-down scale, you can always load an arrow in there, you know, in the bow, pull it down, and then reference wherever that, that arrow, you know, whether it, whether it intersects center riser or a burger hole or, or the front of the riser, just get a reference of that so that way you can go back and measure that arrow and actually calculate true draw length. And in, in this situation, this bow is an 80 pound bow and right now it's pulling exactly 80.2 and pulling 29 and an eighth inch on this bow as it sits, factory set. I've probably got, I don't know, 300, 350 shots out of this bow so far. So this set is gonna get essentially with some of the reference that I have on this reference chart, it's gonna get put back in a baggie, paper clip the edges so that way they don't come unraveled, and I'm gonna keep this reference chart in the bag with it. So that way, once I, if I happen to have to ha put that set back on, if I have an accident, broadhead slices a string, or you fall down and you tear a couple strands on rocks or something, you know, and I have to go back and put that set back on, I can always go back and reference my reference chart Verify once it's on I can go back and check a couple of things even if I don't have a vice Obviously if it, this is an example if, you, if you're in the field, right? So even if I don't have a bow vice I can put the set back on I can I usually keep a very small tape measure with me in my repair kit And I can start taking some measurements as well as obviously you can eyeball an, an arrow in the string You know to check to check level, but nonetheless having that reference chart is a good backup second thing I'll, I'll encourage you to do is if, if you're new to working on bows, and again, you're going to tackle the chore of replacing string and cables, the process really is not that difficult. Just take it one step at a time. What I usually do is I'll take the string off completely. I'll go back, take the new string, and I'll just line them up next to each other, stretch them out, make sure they're the same length. Obviously, sometimes the, the measurements on the front, very rarely, but it can happen, there could be a mistake. In the pro shop today, so hearing the phone in the background, sorry about that, but um, so double check the, uh, the measurement, make sure that they're the same length, spec length. Uh, next thing you want to do is, you know, once, once I take the string off, then I'll work a cable, one cable at a time. Make sure it gets back in the same tracks, make sure everything looks good, same thing. Check the length, make sure that nothing's out of whack, so that, and then once I get done with it, I'll take the old string, I won't unravel it or ravel it anymore, I'll take it just as it is, I'll take the little paper clips that are on the, on the new string and I'll paper clip the two ends, fold it back up, put it in the bag. So one step at a time, like I said, take one thing off. If you're new to it, just take your string off 
and then work one cable at a time. Once you get the cables on, you put the string back on. The things you'll notice on a string is most of these bows have a string stop. You're going to have a, set, a piece of serving that's on the lower side. You'll usually have, let me see if I can pull it up real quick here or pull it open. <clears throat> you'll usually have on your string a little tag end that they pull through with um, to show you where the center of that, that string is, and that's going to be towards the top. So as far as understanding orientation, um, that's the easiest way to check that. And then the other thing is on cams, and again, I'll, I'll show you some pictures, but when you see uh, every once in a while, so, and, and everybody makes mistakes, right, but um, the, there is a shorter side of serving on one side of the cable than the other. The other has a long, lot longer side. So when the coils, when the cams coil up, the longer side is going to hit that longer track. The shorter side is obviously on a smaller, smaller loop here. So make sure you just get those in the correct orientation as well. Um, so that way you've got longevity from your, from your serving and, and it, uh, it gives you maximum life on that string. You don't want the unprotected portion of string to be going over the, the, the long side of that cam where it's, you're, you're basically, you got strings directly on the, on the track of the, of the cam. So take a little bit of time. Like I said, one thing at a time, take pictures, reference. Again, I, I have a reference chart. I'll try to get a PDF of this up on the website. Um, so that way if somebody wants to go, you just take a look at it or download it, you have that. I'll also um, take a, just a snapshot and overlay it on the video so you can kind of see what the, the different categories that are on there. Some of, the, some of the ones aside from your standard axle to axle and brace height measurements are, um, I have a measurement from the inside of the knot on the top knot to center peep. So I have that as a reference. Another one I just throw in there as another reference is inside of that knot to the axle. A Little bit of an angle, but at least, again, if, if something seems like it came out of whack in the field and you're not sure, again, you don't have a vice, you don't have levels, you don't have that out there, but maybe you take a small tape measure with you. I mean, like I, I take one of the little itty bitty ones in my repair kit and I'll have some references of some measurements. Um, the other thing I measure is, you know, I'll, I'll, in, in my situation with the ham scale, I'll raise the launcher and then I'll measure from the inside of the riser to center shaft. That's another measurement. Um, let me see what else I got here. Top of the shaft to the bottom of the housing. So whenever my peep or when, whenever my, my uh, site is in its home base setting, right? So this is um, zero, the bottom pin is at 40 yards. So for example, once this is at 40, uh, same thing, I'll put an arrow in there, load the launcher, and then I'll take a measurement from the top of the shaft to the bottom of the housing. So that way, I, again, I know if, if something seems like it bumped or it came out of place, or worst case, you know, these sites have a nice metal tape. I've used printed tapes before and I've tried to um, laminate them, if you will, but I have been in the field in, on hunts before, specifically the one that comes to mind is my sheep hunt to where it rained for days and days on end to where my tape started to bleed out so I went and I actually started engraving lines on the side of my site with my knife so that way I knew, I knew where the, the different references were. In this situation, if something gets bumped out of place, a site tape gets ruined and you don't exactly know where you're at, you can always load that arrow back up, measure from the top of the shaft to the bottom of the housing, and at least you know if you have a multiple pin site, those pins are now at least established there. In worst case, you're still hunting, right? Maybe you don't have the ability to extend that range a little bit into your second third or your last third of your effective range, but you have your base pin setting set in a reference to, uh, to, to double check for that. So archery is all about references. <clears throat> um, and even in the process of building out a, you know, putting a new, new set of string and cables on here, we're going to go back and once the bow is built, we're going to go back and double check those references again. So the process is going to be this. Again, I've already double checked references. So once I take this set out, I'm going to attach this reference chart in a bag and I'm going to keep this in my pack, in my repair kit, in the event I need it for some, in an emergency. And then once this bow has 100, 150 shots through it, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do another reference chart specifying the string and cables, the date, and um, the accessories and everything on here. And then I'm going to take, repeat all these measurements and have that in hand. So once the bow's tuned and it's ready to go and it's dialed in, I have that reference chart, again, if I'm in the field at a 3D shoot or uh, a hunt or whatever the case is, I can always go back to that reference chart if something seems like it's out of whack. So, 
pay attention to your references. Take your time if you're new working on equipment. Um, don't be afraid to work on your equipment. I encourage people to learn because that's one of the biggest things is, as I progressed and I was shooting a lot of 3D archery years ago, once I started understanding how things moved and why they moved and what they, you know, moving this, you know, means this is gonna happen. Or if you do this, then this is gonna happen. Once you understand that, you have a better rounded picture as to, you know, if, there's, if you're having mistakes or problems while you're shooting, you have a better understanding of how to fix them. You know, or even if you take your bow to a pro shop like, like ours here, you're going to be able to understand the terminology a little bit better. So if somebody says, you know, hey, what, whatever, you know, your, your cable slide's wearing out, uh, you know, and it's causing this, or um, yeah, your, your cables have stretched and they're not, they didn't stretch evenly. We gotta go back and retime your cams and get them back in sync. You know, all those things you're gonna start to understand better. So I appreciate you checking out the video. Um, like I said, get yourself a reference chart. Get your, you can use a scratch piece of paper, whatever you do. Take some pictures, take some video of your bows and have that as well. Because again, if, if you're new to working on equipment, you know, if you ever get in a sticking point, go back and reference that and you'll be able to probably get yourself out of it. All right, anyway, leave a comment below. I mean, if you work on your own stuff, let me know, you know if there's something in addition to what I've covered here that you also use as a reference. Again, you know, this channel is all about helping people be into that top 10% successfully punching tags every year. I, I'm not saying I know everything. I'm just, again, trying to cover topics and uh, aspects of, of the bow and the hunt that um, maybe mistakes I've made to help somebody else learn from it. So if there's something different that I didn't touch on, leave me a comment below. Interesting, I'd be interested to see what, what those look like. So stay tuned and uh, be bringing some more content down the way.